What's that? There's an elephant in the room? Okay, it's not an elephant, but that's all I had, so whatever. If you're just here to hear the message in the title and you don't really care about sewing, there's a timestamp for you to skip over the stitchy stabby stuff. Now, if you are here for sewing content. Hello everyone, I am Kayla with McNerdy Costumes and Props and welcome back. Wait, it's McNerdy Makes now. Jeez, that is, that is gonna be one tough habit to break. The name has changed and I'm in the process of editing the video to explain that. But I had never intended on making this video until recently, so here we are. Oh my god, why am I like this? Speaking of literal human disasters, I was supposed to have this project finished for Cozy 2021. It was a lovely collaboration between so many Coztubers here on YouTube and I didn't finish on time. The challenge was simple. 14 of us acquire the same fabric from Ikea called Kalkbrack. Kalkbrack. Kalk what does that say? Kalk? I can't. I'm probably disappointing Daisy with my very terrible Swedish pronunciation, so sorry about that. So anyway, the idea behind this project was to see what everyone else came up with because there were really no limits on what you could do with this fabric. If you'd like to see the videos from the other amazing Coztubers that actually managed to be productive and responsible content creators, the links are down below. I procured seven yards of the Kalkbracken, whatever. I procured seven yards of the fabric sent to me by the lovely Miss Philomena because I don't live anywhere near an Ikea, and I had intended on making a medieval fantasy gown. Wait, what? Me? Medieval fantasy gown? That's completely and totally unexpected and not something I would ever do. But after I got the fabric, I stumbled across these pictures of structured panel gowns. This kind of turned the gears of creativity a little bit. Since I decided to buy fabric for the first time in a long time and be supremely extra with my budget, I decided to be supremely extra with this project as well. Oh, look at that. With my hand buried so deep in my purse digging for change to cover this project, you can't tell what finger I'm holding up. Can you please, just this once, be cool? Just this once? Anyway, this entire project was out of my usual realm and comfort zone. Between buying the fabric, the modern, non-historical ball gown, the structured look, and the self-drafted pattern, it was definitely a unique set of challenges, but let's start with the pattern. The pattern drafting is a little bit intense, so I'm going to be posting a separate video kind of explaining the process behind how I drafted it. But I'll be putting a diagram up here of my pattern measurements for you to screenshot if you so desire. The Kalkbracken fabric is a medium weight cotton, so I needed some pretty stiff and structured fabric to hold it up. What I needed was a petticoat, so I decided to go with cotton organdy. This is an absolute dream to work with as it's so crisp, so papery, and just so easy to cut and sew through. Thankfully, there is no pattern matching to do on either fabric. So I alternated the placement of the pattern with the hem facing upward for one cut and the hem facing downward for the next. This helped me save on fabric waste and I'm actually really impressed with how economical this is. I only ended up using less than five yards for this entire gown. Anyway, I cut a total of 12 panels and connected them together with French seams to pull the seam inward for that lovely rolled look. It's standing up on its own, no starch needed. I love it. Okay, so we've got all the panels put together, except for this back one. I seamed it together, but I left the edges raw to be able to French it after I based in the zipper. I have like a bag of old zippers I ripped out of things, so reuse. Things were going well. The structure was beautiful and I was really, really happy with the shape. Then it came time for the boning. I'm not typically a machine sewist since I prefer to work by hand, but since this entire project was about me leaving my comfort zone in absolutely every way possible, I decided to go with the flexible sew-in boning. And as anyone who has ever worked with it before will probably expect, things started to go wrong. This petticoat started to become a literal nightmare as the boning went in. Each piece I put in made it harder and harder to wrangle the structured mass underneath my machine. It kept snapping my thread and I attempted to do a bunch of it by hand and it was just, oh my gosh, it was a complete nightmare. I didn't have enough of the organdy to start over and because I was so frustrated with this petticoat, I decided to put it aside and start working on the main fabric to remind myself why I was doing this project. For the complementary fabric, I decided to pair the IKEA fabric with this lovely wine red poly satin, which you might remember from my 1880s corset video. 
Now, the skirt construction is pretty straightforward as it's literally the same exact pattern and put together in exactly the same way with the French seams, just sands the boning. A lot of the upcoming footage is the draping of the bodice and the decorative elements. I won't be describing what I'm doing because it's pretty clear just by seeing it, but if anything needs to be explained in greater detail, please let me know in the comments and I would be so happy to answer any of your questions. The skirt came together with absolutely no trouble at all. So the time came for me to unwillingly pick up the petticoat again and attempt to get it to hold the shape that it was designed for. The thin, flexible boning was just collapsing under the weight of the skirt. And while it was kind of somewhat holding the shape, it just wasn't that perfect structure that I was looking for. I was frustrated and angry, and I even tried to add some wire in the hem to get it to hold out in the shape a little bit more, but it still wasn't enough. As I almost always do with every project, I contemplated giving up and just tossing it in the UFO bin where it belonged. But even as discouraged as I was, I chose to power through, and I'll tell you why. Every time I post a video here, I'm always telling a story with a moral and a theme, and sometimes the meaning may be a little more subtle, but it's there. I'm the main protagonist in this crazy and hectic tale. But the thing is, there's a villain in this story too. There's an antagonist intent on keeping the hero from achieving their true purpose. One who's constantly the nemesis, preventing me from completing the quest and claiming the prize. And that villain is myself. I decided to give myself a break for this project because I typically work with recycled materials. These are things I've pulled out of a dumpster or rescued from the side of the road. I love finding a use for things that would have otherwise ended up in a dump. I get to give them a beautiful chance at a second life. Josh calls it hoarding, but whatever, potato, potato. Though I love what I do and the passion that it gives me, I felt like for this project, I deserve the chance for once to work with brand new materials purchased specifically for this project. I wanted to struggle less and feel more like I've grown in my skills over the past couple of years. Sometimes working with materials that aren't ideal for the project brings its own set of struggles. But even with the right fabrics, the structured plan, and the carefully drafted pattern, I still struggled. A lot. <laughs> the moment that petticoat started to give me trouble and wasn't laying like it was supposed to, I got frustrated. I only filmed from the pretty sides and began to find fewer and fewer good angles as the project went along. Eventually, I stopped filming altogether as I tried to salvage what I'd put so much work into. I typically leave a struggle in my videos, something that's tough about the particular thing I'm working on. But I know I'm not alone when I say I often feel like I struggle a lot more than the average person. There are so many mistakes I don't show in the final video for a lot of reasons. Honestly, I'm often afraid of what people will think when I do the wrong things. But I'm being unfair to myself in these moments because I'm building up these ideas in my head based on the YouTube videos and the beautiful Instagram pictures that I see. I watch the heavily edited and satisfying videos of people that properly iron, baste, and finish their seams. The ones that actually make this weird thing called a mock-up and they use a thimble, whatever that is. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that kind of content. I find myself inspired by it all the time. But I do find that no matter how much those creators tell their viewers not to hold themselves to the same set of standards, I still find myself unhappy with my work. It doesn't look as aesthetically pleasing as theirs during the process, and I know a lot of other people put the same kind of pressure on themselves. Usually I have the excuse of working with literal garbage to appease my thoughts, but that wasn't the case with this project. I was thoroughly discouraged and frustrated that even when I had the chance to work with brand new materials, it still wasn't right. They still weren't pretty and I felt like a failure. In the middle of contemplating abandoning this gown altogether, this happened. What's wrong with you? Oh, I'm just frustrated, baby. It's okay. Just wanna throw this dress in the trash. <laughs> It's okay, you can do it next time. You do better, right? <laughs> That's right. I love you. This tiny human, wise beyond her years, taught me a valuable lesson to take the advice that I give to her every single day. I realized that even if I had never picked up this project again, I unlocked a new potential and leveled up. I grew as a person, even if the only thing I took away from this project was a mistake that I wouldn't make again. Maybe. I hope
hope this message reaches someone who needs it right now. Don't compare yourself to the perfect tiny stitches and the gorgeous final reveal footage that's taken from strategic angles to hide the sins that were edited out. Don't forget your value as a creative person because you don't see the raw footage that no one wants to show. Some of you listening to these words right now will be the first person to offer support to a creator that's being unnecessarily hard on themselves. So if you take nothing else away from this video, please give yourself the grace and encouragement that you give to everyone else. You're worthy of it too. Find the courage within your heart to forgive yourself for the mistakes that you make. The raw, unedited version of yourself that's beautiful and talented, even if you can't see how much you've grown in your abilities. Don't let the voices of those inner demons keep you from seeing everything that you've accomplished. With this particular project, I gained insight into so much. I learned that I'll never buy the cheap plastic sew-in boning ever again. I found out that sewing through it will absolutely screw up my machine, leading me to take the whole thing apart to fix the tension issue, only to promptly forget how to put it back together and duct taping the shell just to keep it held together. I didn't show that because I thought it was an eyesore and that professionals don't do that kind of thing, what? For so many of my projects, like the sewing machine, I did what had to be done, even if it wasn't pretty. And I sure as hell wasn't gonna show it because I was scared. But you know what? I'm not afraid anymore. Push your hand where mine is. Nope. On top. This stupid petticoat has given me nothing but trouble since three hours into the damn project. It won't stand out properly even with the ugly wire in the hem holding it in place. I didn't use enough of this crappy boning that I'll certainly never use again, and the whole thing is so big I can't fit it under my really pissed off machine anymore. But it turns out, duct tape fixes a lot more than just my sewing machine. This sticky silver savior isn't pretty. A confident professional costumer would probably start over with the right boning, but I am no such f***ing person. I am so over this stupid limp petticoat that's supposed to be delightfully structured, but is instead looking at me like it's had too much whiskey. It has fought me at every turn, and I am done doing the proper thing. I could have just edited this part of the video out. I could have just put the outer skirt over it and never showed it again, and no one watching would have ever known. But I want you to know what I really did. Sometimes you've got to do what needs to be done, and sometimes it isn't pretty at all. This is a time to forgive yourself. Screw up and screw up again. Leave those seams raw, but damn the consequences that will inevitably come back to bite you in the ass. The important thing is, is that you did it, whether you finished the project or not, because either way, you still gain the XP. If you know someone that needs to hear this message right now, please share it with them so they know it's okay to be a literal disaster. Because I am, and I don't mind. From this experience, I also learned that duct tape is perfectly acceptable as hem structure for a skirt rather than horsehair braid. It's less expensive and there is absolutely no sewing required. I wouldn't have finished this project without the option of the gloriously useful Mandate brand stuck on me. Now I get to frolic around in this badass cottagecore thoroughly extra and impractical gown that I'm literally never going to wear again. And this moment was absolutely worth every bit of frustration I felt along the way. I'm making a vow to show you the beauty of real life from now on, even if it's cringeworthy. I'm glad that I had the chance to work with some beautiful materials, but I think I'll be going back to the old recycled things. They need a purpose and a home that I can give them. And I want to be true to the purpose that I am trying to achieve here on this channel. I'm sure I'll still use some new materials from time to time, but I'm not afraid to show the raw, unsightly process anymore because that's what I want to show. This petticoat definitely isn't pretty, but it is the beautiful support and structure of the fabric that I wanted to showcase. This project wouldn't have been possible without it. And anyway, who cares? It's underwear. No one's ever gonna see it because you're not gonna tell anyone, right? Coming up next on McNerdy Makes. We don't have time for yet another new project. Did someone say new project? Oh, no. Yeah, who invited you? Moving is always stressful, but for me, this move is just beyond anything that I ever expected. Tearing down pretty much everything I've built in the last year and a half. And I brought my daughter home and she was born to this house. And I haven't started on the sewing room yet. I think that's gonna be the hardest one of all. So I'm saving it for last. <laughs> <laughs> 